This is question number 10. We're told the curve C has equation y is equal to 9 minus 4x minus 8 over x, where x is greater than 0. The point P on C has x coordinate equal to 2. In part A for 6 marks, we need to show that the equation of the tangent to C at the point P is y is equal to 1 minus 2x. So all we need for a tangent is a straight line. A straight line requires a point that it goes through and a gradient. So let's start off. We have an x coordinate. We need to find a y coordinate. So when x is equal to 2, we can say that y is equal to 9 minus 4 lots of 2, which is going to give me 8. And then we're going to have minus 8 over 2, which is going to be 4. So from this, we can see the y coordinate is going to be negative 3. So we have now the point P and we have the coordinates 2 comma negative 3. If I want the gradient, I'm going to have to differentiate y with respect to x. dy by dx gives us the gradient. So y is going to be equal to 9 minus 4x minus 8x to the power of negative 1. So let's go ahead and differentiate this. So dy by dx, differentiating a constant is going to give us 0. If I differentiate 4x, I'm going to get 4. So we're going to have negative 4. I'm going to multiply down by the power, which is going to give me plus 8. Then we're going to have x to the negative 2. So from this now, we can say that dy by dx, if you like, could be written now as the negative 4 plus 8 over x squared. So that's the gradient function. We've got this point P. So we can say at P, dy by dx, the gradient function, will be our negative 4 plus 8 over over and we're going to have now the 2 squared which is going to give me 4 so that's going to give me now negative 4 plus the 2 which is going to give me on here now negative 2 so that is the gradient so what we've got then is now m the gradient which is going to be equal to negative 2 so we've got everything we need for a straight line so using y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1 We've got that this will be y, and then we're going to have plus 3 will be equal to negative 2, then we'll have x minus 2. So we end up now with y plus 3 is equal to negative 2x plus 4. They want this now in the form y is equal to 1 minus 2x. So if we just write this on, subtracting the 3 from both sides, we've got y is equal to 1 minus the 2x as required. So that's the first part done now for 6 marks. We need to find an equation of the normal to C at the point P. So for the normal I'm going to state that m1, the gradient of the tangent, is negative 2. Therefore m2, which is going to be the gradient of the normal, is going to be positive 1 half as m1 multiplied by m2 will be equal to negative 1 if perpendicular. Remember, the normal is perpendicular. We've got this point right here, so we can say that y, then we're going to have plus the 3, will be equal to 1 half, we'll have x, and then we'll have minus 2. So at this stage, we're asked to find an equation. You can put it in the form y equals mx plus c, or you can multiply through. I'm going to multiply through by the 2, so we've got 2y plus 6 is equal to x minus 2. So we could say if we wanted from here that, that uh, 0 was going to be equal to x minus 2y, and then we would have now minus 8. Or if you wanted, you could simply write this now as 2y is equal to x minus 8, and then go ahead and divide by 2. It's entirely up to you y is equal to 1 half x minus 4. That's another way that it can be written. We're not asked for a particular form, um, so up to you. You might prefer this method, so it's, it's neither here nor there. The tangent at P meets the x-axis at A, and the normal at P meets the x-axis at B. We need to find the area of a triangle APB. So let's just draw a quick sketch. We've got A, P, B. So what we're going to have is a coordinate axis. So let's go ahead and do that. We've already established now that the point P has the coordinates 2, comma, negative 3. So if we look now, 2, comma, negative 3, we'll put that just there, and that's going to be P. 
we're told now the tangent is going to cross the y, the uh, x-axis, sorry, at the point A, so that's a tangent. So if we look at this one, when y is equal to 0, we've got 0 is equal to 1 minus 2x. So we can say that the x-coordinate is going to be 1 half. So what we have then is the following. This point here, we've got P, and then we've got now on here 1 half 0. So let's put this on. This is going to be A. So A is going to be 1 half, let's put this here, 1 half comma 0. P we know is 2 comma negative 3. On the next part, we've got the point B. That is where the normal meets the x-axis. So if that's the case, if we look at this, what we're going to have then, if the normal meets the x-axis, the normal is the equation here, 0 will be equal to 1 half x minus 4. So from this, adding 4 and multiplying by 2, x is going to be equal to 8. So what we've got then is this point over here. This is not massively accurate, but we've got now the point, and that's going to be 8 comma 0. So let's just look at our triangle. With our triangle, we've got now the perpendicular height. The perpendicular height is going to be 3, and we have a base. If we just consider now the perpendicular height is just the y coordinate. So if we look at this, what we've got now is 8 minus 1 half, which is going to give us 7.5, or we could say 15 over 2. That's the base. That's that length right here. We've got a perpendicular height now of 3. So multiply by 3, and then we need half of this. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times by height. So that's going to give me now 45 over 4, and that will be units squared. So all I've done is simply drawn a little sketch here. We've looked at the points of intersection. We've considered the perpendicular height and found the area. So for our in part C for four marks in total, our area should be 45 over 4 units squared.